Hello sweetest potatoes! Having spent the majority of my conscious life optimizing for productivity, testing out new habits, creating all sorts of routines, and even unintentionally turning it into my niche here on YouTube over the past couple of years, I'm here to tell you today that I may have had it all wrong. My palms are so sweaty. Okay, so here's how our relationship with productivity usually starts. On a day we're feeling particularly scattered and done with ourselves, we think, how do I fix this? This is where our relationship with post-it notes on walls, Kanban boards, bullet journal, and meditation begins. On a day we're feeling particularly burnt out, we don't do anything about it because, well, we're burnt out. But sooner or later, we ask ourselves, how can I prevent this from happening again? We discover the art of work-life harmony and pencil and me time during our days and weeks. On a day we're feeling particularly behind and not where we're meant to be, we look at books and YouTube videos on how to get your life together, thus beginning our budding relationship with productivity. Looking back on my journey with productivity, even though I am someone who naturally values efficiency, my interests in routines and systems have always stemmed from a place of desperation and need for control when I feel like my life is getting very out of control. Before we get into why this is inherently wrong, let's first talk about where our obsession with productivity even came from. And before we talk about that, if you're like, where have you been, Ra? I'm just gonna pretend like you were, you haven't been posting for weeks on weeks on weeks. I have an episode on my podcast, Voice Hugs, dedicated updates on where I've been. I'll link that below. And I've also been posting a lot more on Instagram. So if you guys want to follow my journey there a little bit more in real time, that's also linked down below. Okay, so why are we so obsessed with productivity. We can trace it back to the Roman and Greek empire, talk about the industrial revolution, pin it on the tech boom. But when you really boil everything down, I feel like we're all just looking for something. This is why we busy ourselves filling every single second of every day so that we don't need to be left alone in our own thoughts. We're feeling more alone and lost than ever, so we cling on to what we know and what's familiar. We don't know how to face this existential crisis thing, so we distract ourselves with literally anything. Games, social media, relationships, drama, sports, anything. Anything to just distract us from feeling and distract us from ourselves. And of all of these things that we can distract ourselves with, productivity at the very least seems a bit more noble, a bit more useful, and a bit more beneficial to our future. So my hypothesis is school and work just so happen to be the thing that's closest to us. It's like the lowest hanging fruit for us to latch onto and give meaning to because we've been told or sold from a young age to value getting good grades, going to good school, getting good job in order to live a good life. So if everything's so beautifully laid out and beautifully planned for us, why question anything? Whether it's by design or how human society is supposed to work, what I do know for sure is that the concept of grinding and hustling has been around for a very long time. I think we can all say that hustle culture has definitely added fuel to the flame, but I actually don't think hustle culture is to blame. I think we are. Productivity for me has always been a means to an end. It's been this cycle of, I feel like my life is getting out of control, feeling scattered. So I try to come up with solutions to get my life together. And it just kind of goes like this infinitely because we can never truly ever get our life together. But we'll talk about that later. While on the surface, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of problem solving. Something happens, you come up with a solution for it. I realized for myself that I'm constantly spending my time and energy coming up with new and creative ways to put out fires rather than preventing fires from happening in the first place and that I've been looking for quick band-aid temporary fixes to my very permanent problems. In other words, I have been very reactive. The reality of our pursuit with productivity is that the more we define ourselves through this specific lens of productivity, the less we're able to see through any other lens. Just like how the more we manage our time through it, the more we become subservient to it. And how the more we're focused on things we haven't done in the past and all the things we still have to do, which is the future, we're becoming more and more disconnected with the present, which is the here and the now. See, the thing is, productivity is a trap. Becoming more efficient just makes us more rushed. Trying to clear the deck simply makes them fill up faster again. The day will never arrive when we finally have everything under control, when the flood of emails has been contained, when our to-do lists have stopped getting longer, when we're meeting all our obligations at work and in our home lives, when nobody's angry with us for missing a deadline or dropping the ball, 
and when the fully optimized person we've become can turn, at long last, to the things life is really supposed to be about. Let's start by admitting defeat. None of this is ever gonna happen, but you know what? That's excellent news. Why? Because it's so darn liberating <laughs> to know that we're not machines wired to produce maximum results around the clock, to know that our lives will never truly be together, no matter how many how to get your life together videos we make or watch, hi to know that we're not perfect we never will be and that that's perfectly okay and to know that life is precious and finite and we'll never get to do every single thing that we want to do not in a sad and depressing way but in a let's make the best of what we have kind of way fundamentally i feel like i've just really lost touch with why i even enjoy being productive or like what drew me to productivity in the first place i'm not trying to work quickly and efficiently so that i can have more work to do i'm working quickly and efficiently so that i can make time for things that are meaningful to me and i think a lot of us are stuck on the former because well life just gets the best of us and it happens so what's the way forward enter slow productivity Woo! i'm so excited to talk about slow productivity the term slow work came from journalist carl honore in his 2004 book in praise of slowness where he challenges the cult of speed as well as shares what the slow movement is which is a movement that advocates for a cultural shift towards slowing down life's pace isn't it wonderful? I think it's beautiful. So this concept has been around for quite some time now. It's not something new at all. As for slow productivity, it's a new term coined earlier this year in 2002 by Cal Newport, author of Deep Work, as well as Digital Minimalism. On Tim Ferriss' podcast, he shared how we all need to be doing significantly less, but the things that we're working on and the things that we're doing do it better and over longer periods of time. Instead of measuring ourselves by hours, days, weeks, scale that up to months and years. So what that basically does is that it takes off this sense of overwhelm and stress and dread that we have when we give ourselves timelines of like yesterday because that doesn't really factor in the seasonalities of life. We'll have good days, we'll have bad days. The example he gave specifically is, you know, you can work on something for a week and not work on it for a month and still be okay because your deadline is I want to do this thing over a span of say five years. You're giving yourself that time, you're giving yourself that space, you're giving yourself that grace. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna combine these two concepts of slow work and slow productivity with 4,000 Weeks, Time Management for Immortals, which is the book that basically inspired this video. I don't know why I'm so gaseous today. Maybe I'll drink some water. I hope that helps. All right, the central thesis of 4,000 Weeks is that our time on earth is finite. If we live to be about 80, we'll have about 4,000 weeks to live, which the author puts is absurdly, terrifyingly, insultingly short. So this idea that we're able to wield perfect control over our time is delusional at best, and it will only lead to disappointment, guilt, and unhappiness. Instead, we should strive to live within realistic parameters to live our lives as full and meaningful as possible. How? Well, the first thing is to acknowledge our morality time limitations, and the fact that we can't possibly do everything we want to do in this life. If you guys remember my earlier videos where I shared about experiencing loss at 17 and how that experience made me realize how fragile and temporary life can be and that at any moment, you or I, anyone we know, literally anyone on this earth can depart at any moment, it did help me realize how lucky I am to be alive and how precious our existence is. <laughs> and that without this deep realization and deep appreciation for my morality, I wouldn't be able to cherish myself and my existence as much as I do today. I wouldn't know what to prioritize, how to prioritize. I wouldn't know to put my head down and grind because I wouldn't know which direction to do that in. And I would not ultimately be where I am today. I really do think when we're able to truly acknowledge our morality, look at it dead in the eyes, be grateful for it, 
that's I think what makes life meaningful the fact that we're alive and there's only this amount of time that we have to live so why not make the best of it and I'm getting emotional talking about it because I feel like I haven't been making the best use of my time but yes I think this this is very very powerful so going back to slow productivity what it means to me is a combination of all of this it's slowing down it's doing less but better accepting our morality and our limits while embracing our morality and our limits we can use it to our advantage because my time is finite because my time is limited how do i want to spend my time how do i want to live my life for who do I want to live my life? Before we get to tactical tips on how to slow productivity, there's three questions I'm going to propose for us to ponder because I think if we really don't get the staring morality in the face thing right, nothing else matters. No matter how beautiful your systems are, no matter how flawless your that girl morning routine is, that was so long ago, there's probably, no matter how hot your hot girl walks are, none of that matters because this is still, it's not, there's just no direction. So you can do all these things on the, on the surface, you can feel good about yourself, but at the core, at the core, you're still on the hamster wheel. So asking yourself these questions can help us gain clarity, it can help us take a step off of the hamster wheel, and it can help us prevent fires from happening in the first place. And I also feel like the easiest way to implement these concepts into our life is to really think about what it means to us. So the very first question is, what does slow productivity mean to you and what does it look like? Please leave it down below because I feel like this is a newer term. We can come up with our own potato fam definition for what slow productivity is. The second question is, why do you want to bring slow productivity into your life? For me, it's really about making time for what's most important. And for me, what's most important is spirituality. If I can get this right, which I really think is mental, but so we can get this right, it will flow into everything external as well. I believe as humans, and this is also kind of in Buddhism, that we all have a human side and a divine side. The human side is what we need to cultivate. Our divine side is what knows it just knows the way it knows the Tao. it knows the principles and so i think it applies to our work as well to humanly do good work versus to tap in and lean into your divine side to do the work to have faith to allow spirituality and your beliefs to use you to create good work another thing is i just literally can't live as i did before where i was constantly stressed constantly burnt out like my shoulders and my my back are like always tense and I just couldn't function and that to me was the norm that shouldn't be the norm I think that's the norm for so many of us this shouldn't be our norm period okay the last question is what is most important to you now before we try to tackle this question let's do a little exercise let's Close your eyes. Don't be shy. I'll do it with you. Close your eyes and visualize yourself wherever you are. So for me, I'm seeing myself on my couch talking to a camera. Now, zoom out a little. Zoom out to your neighborhood and see yourself kind of from like a bird's eye perspective. You look a lot smaller, right? Okay, now zoom out even further. Zoom out to your city. You look even smaller. Zoom out to your country. Now zoom out one more time to seeing yourself in this spinning blue and green ball that is Earth. And then zoom out even further to the galaxy. And then try to find yourself. <laughs> you can't because you're a little speck of dust among the stars. This is one of the most humbling experiences, realizations that I came to, I don't know, I've came to this realization many times. So whenever I'm super in my head, I just like do this visualization, just like slowly pulling back. And it also helps give me perspective that I am but a little blip in the universe and that my problems, although, they're, although they are valid, they are quite insignificant in the grand scheme of things and that it's totally fine and that's totally okay. And at the same time, because I I've been gifted this opportunity to live because I've been 
given this opportunity to live, why not live it well and why not live it to the best of my ability? All of that is just to help you answer what's most important to you. I've created videos in the past to help give framework, I need worksheets to kind of choose and prioritize and like visually see what some of these values are. And again, the purpose of all of this is that when our values become crystal clear, we're able to focus on those few things and be very okay with that, which means like some other things may probably fall to the side or they may be neglected, but like it's okay because you made a very conscious decision that these are the things you want to focus on. And because we have more time now, we can obsess over quality. All right. Woo! Moving on to practical and tactical tips on how to slow productivity. So I know that there's a camp of people who are like, time management tools are obsolete. Calendars are obsolete. You should just go with the natural flow of things. I think there's a time and place for that, but I also feel there's ways that we can use these tools to our advantage. The very first thing is calendar blocking and batching tasks. I like to think of calendars in three layers and you must do it in this order because you will see why. So the first layer you're gonna create is your non-negotiables. This is essentially putting everything that's most important to you first into your calendar so you can plan the rest of your days and weeks around it. The second layer is play. Yes, just trust me, trust me. Unless you've been playing your whole life and you wanna start working, maybe prioritize work before play, whether it is time you're gonna spend by yourself doing what you want with friends. The third layer is where you put work. The premise of calendar blocking and batching your tasks is basically a system for you to fall back on. If you're ever feeling overwhelmed, it's there for you. Okay. I'm tired. I'm so tired. Okay. The second thing is minimizing distractions. I feel like to be productive and to truly lean into slow productivity, we need to not be reminded of things on like a minute by minute, hour by hour basis. If our phone is constantly shining, then we are in essence being subservient to our phone and subservient to the notifications. If you guys wanna watch my video on how to organize your phone to work for you, not against you, a video that I'll link down below. The third is to find productivity apps you love. There's three apps that I wanna share with you guys. None of these apps are sponsored, but they are affiliate. First off, Sinsama. Dear Sinsama, you guys know how much I love this app. The main reason why an app like Sinsama is insanely helpful is that it forces you to be proactive. You don't need Sinsama to do this, but by using something every day, whether it's bullet journaling, whether it's writing it down, whether it's anything, even if your day doesn't go exactly according to what you plan, at least you mentally have a general blueprint of how it's gonna go. And with Sinsama specifically, because the app was founded on the belief that you can't succeed if you're constantly stressed and burnt out. The app is built to remind you if you're scheduling too much in your day. It's gonna be like, are you sure you wanna work over six, seven, eight hours today? Are you sure you can't move any of these tasks to tomorrow? Because this was baked into the app, it's in its DNA, it's like a friend that's looking out for you. It really is like a friend that's looking out for you. And I really appreciate the founders for creating an app that actually helps you. Moving on to Notion. I've made a lot of videos in the past about how I organize my life dashboard, how I create templates like weekly to-do list templates, as well as how I now currently run three of my teams on there, my own team, Beauty Within's team, as well as Voice Hugs. Okay, next we have a new kid on Rose Block which is short form. So short form is essentially book summaries on steroids. Think of blink lists, but deeper. And I think the most beautiful and helpful thing about this book is that it'll actually pull principles, quotes, and thoughts from different books that are similar. For example, in 4,000 Weeks, the author doesn't explain banned as much about why we distract ourselves as humans, but they added a new section from Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth. So taking a step back, I know this is kind of ironic because we're talking about slow productivity and slowing down and doing less but better. And this is like fast, fast, fast. But I don't think it needs to be that way. I'm pretty sure we all have an endless amount of books we want to read, like all right there, like, all those books, literally so many books all around my apartment that I just haven't touched. I haven't touched at all. 
This is less about doing things faster and more about learning how to incorporate these things that you want to do into your life easier. If you guys want to check out short form, I do have a link with a discount for you guys down below that you can check out. All right. The next practical tactical tip is find a routine that works for you. I think when we think of morning routines, evening routines, we think of these like elaborate, crazy, I need to do 20 steps, I need to do all the things. But in reality, you can just literally do one thing. Right when you wake up, just breathe for one minute. Just focus on your breath for one minute. I've talked about in a previous video how big of an impact it has made my day because as the first thing in the morning, you're choosing yourself, you're choosing to be present, you're choosing to be mindful, and this will carry on throughout the rest of your day. So find the equivalent of breathing to you. Maybe you can breathe, maybe you can journal, maybe you can meditate, whatever it is that you choose for yourself, choose you. The fifth tip is to embrace stillness when we're faced with these existential questions when we're faced with these thoughts that we just want to run away from and escape from if we've been doing that i think we should try a new approach which is to just sit there and acknowledge it you don't have to think through it but just acknowledge it to be like oh interesting you're here again oh okay like why you know, like you don't need to answer these, the, the existential questions, but you can ask yourself, oh, why is it here? Is it because I've been ignoring it for a long time? Is it because the universe is trying to tell me something? Maybe my divine side is trying to talk to me to be like, stop being a human all the time. When we're able to spend time alone, when we're able to be still and be alone with our own thoughts, this is truly where a lot of the magic happens. It's truly where a lot of the realizations and enlightenments for me personally that I came to were in these moments where the beginning gets uncomfortable. It's not fun. It's not, I don't know, it's foreign, but the more you're able to do it, the more you're able to lean into it, the more it'll become second nature and the more connected to yourself you'll be and the more connected to your divine side you'll be. Yeah. All right. And then the very last thing is to value deep rest and give yourself permission to take breaks within slow productivity this is the key tenant is the slow part and how do you slow down by taking breaks by giving yourself permission to rest and to actually rest let me just end this video with a quote there is an alternative the unfashionable but powerful notion of letting time use you approaching life not as an opportunity to implement your predetermined plans for success but as a matter of responding to the needs of your place and your moment in history. This to me is really allowing the divine divinity and also the divine side to work through you. I just think that's such a beautiful, beautiful concept. And it's also truly like a very humbling concept too. That to me is truly living your best life and being your best self. When you fully believe and fully allow a higher power, to work through you. Yay! We did it! A new video! Woo! I have a lot of very exciting content planned for the rest of the month and hopefully the rest of the year. I basically took like two, three months off of YouTube um, in between the single video that I would post every month, but feeling great, feeling excited. Thank you guys for your patience. I hope the time was worth the wait. I hope the video was worth the wait. I am so grateful that you guys are here, that we've been able to be on this journey together, that we get to grow together, we get to learn together, we get to now slow productivity together. I really wanna know what it means to you, what you think of this video, and just what you think about productivity in general. I think it's a, it's a discussion worth having just to kind of get a pulse on where everyone's at and how everyone's feeling in this very hustle, grind culture that we live in. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. <laughs> All right, I will see you guys in next week's video. Yay! Bye! And if you guys are like new couch, yes, new couch. It will be in next week's video.